And this week, I'm blessed to have two extra special guests. We've got all <laughs> sisters this week. We have to add the balance in the place. That's right. We have Sister Cheryl Phoenix, who you, I'm sure you're all aware of on top, um, um, Amiga Refrain, because sometimes she hosts a show here every now and again. Mm -hmm. But she is the initial, first, correct me if I mess this up, she's the initial founder, one of the founding um, members of Purple Pages, which later became UK Black Links. She's a... Uh, the, the head of the UK, sorry, sorry, Black Child Agenda, mm -hmm. and she runs Positive Steps Youth Project. I did that all off the top of me noggin with no notes. Well done. There, there you go. So, mm -hmm. welcome, Cheryl. Hello, good evening, afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> it is afternoon still. Yes. It's like it's the breakfast show. <laughs> um, you're, we're going to be discussing you having a very busy week coming up in terms of some of the stuff that's taking place Absolutely. in the news. So we're going to discuss all things about the schools to prison pipeline, but mm -hmm. also this big case that turned up on UK TV this week where a young man was excluded for having dreadlocks. Mm. All right, so we're going to get into some of that. And my other guest is one half of the power couple known as Mark and Charmaine Simpson. Mm from Black History Studies, Charmaine Simpson. Welcome to Talk Black Radio. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Uh, oh, she's so shy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> for now. <laughs> for now. <laughs> Until we get black. Once you start to talk black, yeah. then you will know that this sister is a powerhouse. You <laughs> stick around and you will see how this sister blows up in just a little while. Yeah. But um, it's 10 years of Black History Studies for you, wow. isn't it? Yes. Too. And I, I know you've been doing some stuff with... Mm -hmm financial literacy so we want to talk about the economy and some yeah. of that later mm -hmm. um we also that just in terms of what you've been doing because i know you run courses on all types of black history like yeah. i saw the list that it just goes through almost everything that we could do so yeah. it's, it's a great service and i know it's well received in the community mm -hmm. and that i don't know anyone who doesn't speak highly of the work you do all right so we're gonna get into some of that it's yeah. good it is good mm -hmm. um most of us just get custom. <laughs> 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 it's true. It's true. However, however, uh, so we're going to get into some of that. Yeah. And in terms of black history, we'll, we shall begin there. This week marks the birthday of one of our fallen soldiers, mm -hmm. Geronimo Jig Jigga Pratt. Mm. All right, you, everyone familiar with him? Yes. He, all right. Mm -hmm. I will hand over to David who is our researcher for today and he mm. will tell you but I mean Geronimo Pratt is a big figure in the Black Panthers and mm. just his mm. the, the weight of what he brought to the Black Panthers was really something that we, we really should study and we should remember so David uh, yes okay just a little bit of research here on Geronimo Pratt going online um, Geronimo Pratt he raised in a segregated community <clears throat> his father was in the, the scrap metal business um, he was sent to an all-black school, and at the age of 17, he joined the army. He did a two-year service in Vietnam and was wounded twice. He was, direct, he was decorated for bravery. He reached the rank of sergeant, and he was, in terms of now, his decorations that he received, he received two bronze stars, a silver star, and two purple hearts. Yeah, and, that's the, and one purple heart ain't easy to come by, so two years in the <laughs> army to get all of that is some heavy stuff. Yes, indeed. All right, go ahead. Yes, he left the army to study political science at UCLA, and he became, at that time, he became politically active and was recruited in the Black Panthers. He rose and became Deputy, Min Deputy Minister of Defense. There he was sharing his his expertise in the military maneuvering mm, and political science. And stuff. Yes, yeah. thus he became an enemy of the state. So that's when that's when the Jagger Hoover and um, what not were there were there to undermine the black community. So they with, targeted him specifically, yes, didn't they? Yes, they yeah. accused him of a murder in 1968, December the 16th, of a particular woman. They accused him of murder that he said he was 400 miles away from and he got, had witnesses. Yeah. But on that now, they convicted him um, for 27 years in prison. But, because remember, they had their own witness. Cause I, I looked at some of this myself. So yes, the yes. FBI had their own witness. It was only like 25 years later mm. via the COINTELPRO when those papers yeah. came out. Yeah. They found out that the witness actually just worked for the FBI, yeah. came and said, yes, your honor, he did it. And they put him in jail for 27 years. Yeah, yeah. But it was eventually quashed, wasn't yes, it, in 1997? Yes, yes, and he, yes. do you know what it is? He received 4.5 million in a settlement, and his lawyer at the time was Johnny Cochran. That's right. But 
the reality of it is 4.5 million after 27 years in jail and that heavy mindset that was working for us Mm. is lost so we lose those 27 years he could have been working for us and helping us strategize with our young people and he gets a payment of 4.5 million pounds which at that time i'm sure he would have swapped the 27 years of working within the community yeah but it's just it what i liked about this story was just there's more to actually add to that go ahead well you said that money it's meaningless to what, what he represented in the community. Yes. Because there's a um, an FBI agent here, Wesley Swelgin. He's a former FBI agent who said it was just purely to frame him, to neutralize him. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Yeah. Johnny Cochran, his lawyer at the time, when he was um, going through the court thing, he said that it's just, they just lying, cheating, and stealing his freedom. Yes. This is just a deliberate act to neutralize somebody because of what his potential was and the knowledge he had that he was sharing with the black mm-hmm. community. And I think yeah. sometimes yeah. when they look at organizations yeah. and say whether this one is successful or not, yeah. we, we get into it a lot and they're like, oh, well, this didn't work out or that didn't work out. Mm-hmm. But you don't realize how much of the enemy's hands in. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you, Charmaine, because yeah. you're the black history expert with mm-hmm. us today. In I was doing some research with this stuff and some other bits. We talked about looking into Marcus Garvey and whatever with my son. And just how skewed it is to actually get good black history. You know, like the stuff that doesn't say, oh, Marcus was a poor businessman and he just bought bad <laughs> ships. And, but then, like I'm yes. reading it in many books by big mm. publishers yeah. and I keep seeing it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like whenever I'm reading Malcolm X's history, it never happens without a slant on the most honorable Elijah exactly. Muhammad. We can never, yeah. we can never have um, our history portrayed a certain way how do we get good unadulterated pure history like the, the, the good stuff like white folks get when they talk about yes indeed. Um, Winston <laughs> Churchill yeah, oh, and yes. all their guys like oh, yeah. that good pure history they get that driven white snow <laughs> history that they get how do we get the good history we have to start from the source and start doing our own research mm. and start writing our own books as well um just echoing what you just said about uh mark and when you talk about malcolm x when it's his birthday and i put something about we wouldn't have malcolm x if it wasn't for elijah muhammad yes the twitter and facebook will blow up because mm-hmm. everybody's anti elijah muhammad but it's true if it wasn't for the intervention of the nation of islam we would not have malcolm x and we, many others why do you think that that's put forward by those the powers that be why are they actually making that distinction because they don't want us to know ourselves. They don't want us to know our true history and know the power of our history. If we know the truth about our history, then we can do better mm. and, and actually challenge what the nonsense out there. There's a lot of misinformation that's put out there um, for a reason. There's a set reason, just like the COINTELPRO neutralizing Geronimo Ger- Pratt. Yes, um, there's a lot of um, that's the same reason why they're neutralizing the information they're putting out misinformation so that we start believing the untruths and don't challenge the information and there's a lot of, not a lot of us out there that have the confidence to actually challenge the sh- truth and say this is foolishness mm. this is how it goes mm. and then have that debate with somebody and come to a conclusion but we don't have that because it's like I, I, I'd set my son who's mm. schooling at home with me yeah. and I've said to him let's go ahead go and find out what you can about Marcus and put something yes. together for me I got to the bit he put Marcus was not a good businessman I'm like child yes. my mecca I yeah. get upset <laughs> like where'd you get yeah. this madness from yeah. Wikipedia mm. <sighs> like if you don't if you really do have to study wide yeah. in order to get that and then mm. it, I think if many of us don't really study so we take what's given yes and then we start to have arguments among ourselves yeah. from our point of ignorance because yeah. I was saying to him like one of the books I read mm. I have to say, okay, look, that's what you've read, no problem. Mm. Who's the author? Yeah. Type it in, the author came up. It was a man by the name of Mr. Archer. Who's the publisher? Yes. Puffin Books or oh, Penguin the, Books. Yeah, yeah I understand. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm like, okay, now let's do some study mm. into the publishers. Mm. Now let's look at the um, the author and let's see who, mm. who he was. But when I looked into him, he wasn't like a terrible Ku Klux Klan guy enough, but he's coming from that communist, socialist worker kind yeah. of perspective, oh. which has a level of freedom for them, mm. but always makes us remember the majesty of our former oppressors. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, it was coming through in swathes in the book. And that book, um, I'm not going to do it, to, to, I'm not going to give it a plug, mm. but that particular book had mm. uh, Marcus, Martin, 
Malcolm X and Frederick Douglass in it. Yeah. All the, those are the four characters that were in there. And, um, or the four, sorry, the four um, characters from history that were in there. Mm. And when I've gone through it, all of them have factual errors. Mm. All of them have factual errors. And it's written, but once you've seen it in the book, it's like it was in the book, isn't it? Yeah. I've seen it as Wikipedia. Mm. That's a lot of study. I'm not going to have to read anything else, am I? Yeah. Very few people scroll down to the bottom of Wikipedia, which if you really want to do the research, mm. you have to scroll to the bottom yeah. and see where they got their stuff from, isn't well, it? I remember yeah. Wikipedia, if you're doing, particularly if you go to study at degree level, mm. you can't any that, lecturer it? will tell you not to use, use Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. Anyone can write in and yeah. do a Wikipedia entry. Yeah. So it actually <laughs> is almost not actually worth the paper that is written on because you tend to find information from all over as you said mm. when they have the reference at the bottom yeah. that's where the references are coming from they're not coming from the person who wrote it mm. it's coming from many many sources yeah. who's to say it's truth or factual mm. yeah and that's why we say truth to people um educating the community educate themselves so we will give you the information go and do your own research yes. And go and f go to the sources, go to the archives, go to even go to Jamaica and go to the Marcus Garvey Museum in mm. Kingston. Go and speak mm. to the people there. Actually, mm. go and speak to his son. Mm. Get live actual, factual information from the source.